Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I wanted to talk about one of the more important components to having successful whitetail habitat improvements on your property. Now there's obviously just more than one factor that goes into having successful whitetail habitat improvements. Uh, for example, you wanna make sure you're having your improvements placed in the right location. You also wanna make sure that you're trying your best to reduce human pressure in those areas. But even if you have all of the other boxes checked, your habitat improvements will not reach their full potential without this other factor. So what is one of the more important components to having successful whitetail habitat improvements on your property? Sunlight. And in this video, I kind of want to do something a little bit different. Instead of uh, me just standing in one spot and, and talking to the camera uh, for the entire thing, I kind of wanted to take you guys around the property so we can visit a few of the habitat improvements that we've installed over the past three years. We'll focus on the main ones that you'll be putting in on your property, food plots, travel corridors, bedding areas, food plot trails, and I wanna show you guys just how much sunlight you need to get to those areas to make sure that those improvements really thrive. And at the end of the video, I wanna show you guys the complete opposite. You know, a part of our property that we have yet to do habitat improvements in that does not get a whole lot of sunlight to the forest floor and show you guys the difference in habitat in an area that does get sunlight compared to an area that does not. But right off the bat, since we're already standing here, let's talk about food plots. Now, most of you guys putting in food plots probably already know that in order for your food plot to be successful, you do need to have a lot of sunlight getting to that area. If you're just raking off leaves or blowing off leaves in the, in the middle of the woods, throwing your seeds down, those seeds are most likely gonna germinate, but you're, they're not gonna go much further than that. You, you do need to have a lot of sunlight getting into the area in order for the food plot to take off. This particular food plot is about 10 to 15 yards wide and it runs about 100 yards long north and south. And because of the north-south orientation of this plot, a lot of the area will get decent sunlight just because there's not a whole lot blocking it on the south side. However, there were a few large trees lining the perimeter of this food plot. And because this plot is only 10 to 15 yards wide, those larger trees along the side of the food plot they were shading out good portions of this plot. Those branches are always going to reach towards the sunlight. And because it's open right here in the middle, that's where there's a lot of sunlight. So those large trees are gonna send their branches right to the middle, and that's going to shade out your food plot. Now, depending on what you're planting, you can still have success with filtered sunlight. But if you want your food plot to be successful, try your hardest to not have filtered sunlight. Try to have full sunlight reach in the area, especially for those smaller plots. But now let's head into a bedding area that we cut down a few years back to show you guys an example of how much sunlight those need. All right, so now we're in one of the bedding areas that we cut on our property. This one is about a quarter of an acre in size and we cut it in the spring of 2019. So we are just at two years from when we cut it to right now. And you can see that we're getting a lot of good growth, a lot of new growth in this area. This is a hinge cut maple that we had cut and you can see that the, the new shoots are, are getting you know, four to five feet tall in, in just two years. And, and, and this one is also you know, coming up pretty good. And that, that, this is just the area that you can see from the camera. We have an elm that's uh, coming up pretty good over there. But we, we also have a lot of new growth just coming up from the ground. There's a lot of new maples, a lot of new cherries, a lot of briars, a lot of elderberry coming up in this area. But the only reason that we're getting this new growth is because we are getting a lot of sunlight to the area. So the first step that we, we took when we made this bedding area was we made sure we, we removed all of the large trees in the area that we wanted to cut. Uh, if we did not remove those trees and we just hinge cut these smaller trees, the large canopy trees would eventually close the gap from what that was left when these trees fell. So in, right away we would have had a little bit of sunlight coming in the area but over the last two years, those larger trees would have closed that gap and they would have shaded out these trees, which are now on the ground, and they would not be getting the sunlight needed to survive. So in order to have a successful bedding area, whether it's a hinge cut bedding area, whether you're just cutting trees down in your woods, you need to have sunlight in order to have new growth. It's, it seems painfully obvious, but I just wanna make sure that people understand how much sunlight you actually need in the area in order to get new growth. If you're not taking down the large trees first 
or, or if you're just hinge cutting a few small trees in your woods, they might survive that season and, and maybe the next season, but they're not gonna survive much longer than that. Every bedding area is gonna have an edge to it and that's no different with this one. So we have trees that we've hinge cut away from the center of this bedding area that fell into a closed canopy forest. Okay, so they're getting a little bit of filtered sunlight from the interior of this bedding area, but once the sun gets, gets on top of those large white pines to the camera right over here, those trees are shaded out. And those trees are not gonna make it nearly as long as these trees more in the interior of the bedding area. But if we wanted to, we, you can always cut trees down around the perimeter, but then you're just gonna keep pushing your bedding area out, making it larger. Your, your bedding area eventually has to have an edge, and you know that's just where this one is. But you can see pretty clearly which trees are getting enough sunlight and which trees are not, just because the trees that are, are thriving are the trees that are getting a lot of sunlight. The trees that are dying around the edge, they're not getting a whole lot of sunlight. So again, this bedding area is about two years and two months old. We are getting great growth in here, not only from the hinges, from the stumps, we're also getting a lot of new growth just from what was in the existing seed bank. And more importantly, the deer use it a lot during the hunting season. This is right next to one of our food plots. This is in the dead center of our property. They don't ever get disturbed during the season. So we can always count on a few doe family groups taking up residence in this bedding area. And just like we can count on it, so can the local bucks. So you can bet that we're waiting downwind of this bedding area for those bucks to scent check this spot. But again, none of that would be possible if we didn't give this area enough sunlight for the new growth to really explode. Again, just like the food plot, you do not want filtered sunlight. You want full sun, if possible, reaching these bedding areas so they can reach their maximum potential. So hopefully this gives you guys a better idea as to how much sunlight a bedding area needs. Some of you guys might be thinking you need to take a chainsaw out of your property pretty quick, but now that we've looked at a food plot and a bedding area, let's walk to a travel corridor to see how much sunlight those need. All right, so moving on down the list, we are now standing on one of our deer trails or travel corridor, steering tunnel, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, but in order for this to work, in order for the deer to take this path from point A to point B, or from bedding behind me to food behind the camera, they need to feel safe getting there. When we first purchased the property, this area looked no different than uh, most properties out there. It was open hardwoods, a lot of standing timber, but over the past couple years, we dropped a lot of trees and we made this area really thick. So now this area gets a lot of sunlight. You can tell we have a lot of new growth. On the sides, this is not new growth. This is a tree we took down. So because we took down a lot of trees, not only are we getting a lot of immediate cover on the ground with those hinge cuts or just traditionally felling trees, we're also getting a lot of sunlight. So we're able to get a lot of new growth as well. If you would have walked down this trail when we first purchased the property, and I wish I would have recorded a video of it before, uh, you would have been able to see you know, 400 yards, or, or really as, as far as you could see, because my neighbor has a cow pasture just on, on the other side of the property line. But right now, if I get down to deer level, I can't see 10 yards. And that's exactly what the deer want. They don't want to see very far. They want to feel safe. They want to make sure that predators can't get them. Now, in the travel corridor, you want to make sure you are having a lot of exits so the deer can escape if they feel pressured or if they feel like they're in danger. But you want to make sure it's thick. You want to make sure these deer can get from point A to point B in cover. In order for deer on your property to move during daylight, they need to feel safe. And this is more important for bucks and even more so those older bucks. They need to really feel safe if you want them to move during daylight. And to give them that feeling of safety on the deer trail or the steering tunnel travel corridor, you need to give them cover. And how you do that is again by making sure that area is getting enough sunlight. Now you can get away with more filtered sunlight with these deer trails. They don't necessarily need full sun, but if you were to have full sun, that's not a bad thing. You're just going to get more growth. It's going to get thicker faster, and it's gonna stay thicker faster. Again, one of the things you're gonna run into, one of the risks or potential problems with filtered sunlight is eventually those large canopy trees are gonna close the canopy, and now you're back to square one. With no sunlight, nothing's gonna grow, no cover, no feeling of safety less likely the deer are gonna move during daylight. So again, you wanna make sure you're giving the plants in the area a chance to really grow by giving them enough sunlight. 
All right, guys, moving down the list, we are now standing on one of our food plot trails. This is a food plot trail planted in clover. We have a couple varieties of clover in here, and we have some cereal rye that's coming back from last year as well. It looks like this thing actually needs to get mowed. But uh, I wanted to show you this spot in particular because uh, we use this food plot trail uh, during the hunting season to hunt deer as they're moving from food plot to food plot and bedding area to bedding area. But this food plot trail would not be possible if we didn't have enough sunlight reaching this location. If we had planted this food plot trail in the middle of a closed canopy hardwoods to accomplish the same goals of hunting deer as they move from food plot to food plot and bedding area to bedding area, it, it would not have been successful. We could have the perfect soil, seed to soil contact planted right before rain, but without sunlight, we would not have this type of a result. And we already talked about food plots earlier on how you wanna to try to have full sun instead of filtered sun. This food plot trail is no different. You really wanna to try to have full sun coming into this area, so you really need to take down more trees than you think. If we would have just taken down a few trees here or there, we would have filtered sunlight coming into this area and we would still have some growth. Clover is a little bit more shade tolerant than some of your other food plot varieties, but it does much better in full sun especially in the fall when we're losing daylight every single day. So you wanna take down more trees to make sure you're getting more sunlight into this area. Now, while we took down a majority of the large canopy trees that were blocking a majority of the sunlight, we did leave a few of the smaller trees. They're not gonna really be blocking much sunlight and we still wanna leave some structure in here, some cover in here, so the deer feel comfortable moving through this area during daylight. And guys, you don't have to take down every single tree all in one year. There are still trees that I need to take down that are blocking sunlight on, on this particular clover trail. I'm looking at a large maple right now that's blocking a lot of sun that I really wanna take down. But again, if you want to plant a food plot trail on your property and you want it to come in really thick, you need to make sure that that area is receiving a lot of sunlight. These food plot trails are not very wide. At any given point in the trail, it could go anywhere from five feet wide all the way up to 10 feet wide, this part right here is a little over six feet wide. But because this area is not very wide and you want it to perform the same way as a food plot does, it needs the same sunlight as a food plot. You want as close to full sunlight hitting this area as possible. I, I think if I could give you guys a, a gauge, I, I probably took down about 10 yards worth of trees on one side of the trail and, and then 10 yards of trees on the other side. Now these were the, the large canopy trees. Again, as you can see, I, I do have you know, smaller trees lining the trail for cover. Uh, but, you know, those are not gonna block that much sunlight. If I ever do feel that those trees are gonna start blocking sunlight, you better believe they're gonna come down because I want this trail to continue to perform for us, you know, throughout the hunting season. Because again, during the hunting season, the deer use this trail a lot to move from food plots to other food plots, from bedding areas to other bedding areas. They, they use this food plot to, to browse down as they're moving from point A to point B, and, and we can sit on the side of the property and shoot into this trail. So we just really wanna make sure that this trail is performing during the hunting season, and in order for that to happen, we need to make sure that we continue to have enough sunlight hitting this trail. All right, so now that we've shown you guys four different habitat improvements that we've installed on this property, I wanted to show you guys the power of sunlight in open hardwoods. Also, I wanna show you guys what happens when there is a lack of sunlight in the woods. All right, so now we are at one of the smaller bedding areas on our property. It's not a large bedding area. It's somewhere in between a tenth of an acre and a quarter of an acre in size, but we did not create this one. We, we did help it out a little bit by hinging some of the trees along the outer edge to, to just to kind of get a little bit more sunlight into the bedding area but we did not create this bedding location. This bedding location was created by the sunlight. Over time, trees have just either fallen over or the previous owner of this property removed trees from this location to either work on his woodworking projects or heat his house. We didn't take down any trees in this location, minus a few uh, around the edge, just to, to kind of help give more sunlight to the area. But we didn't even really need to do that. Uh, hopefully you can see, uh, I, I tried to make the lens as wide as I could, just so you can kind of see the open sky above this area. and. This is what you're gonna get if you just open up pockets in your wood. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna happen the following season. You know, three to five years after you open up about a quarter acre in your woods, this is what you're gonna be left with. It's just a, 
a nasty pile of briars. There's elderberry. We, we, there's, there's young saplings coming up in here. There's a ton of grapevines just kind of growing everywhere in here. It's a really thick mess. And when all the leaves come off the trees in the fall, this is still thick. So th this doesn't hold a whole lot of deer in the fall. Again, it's, it's not a very large bedding area, but it gives them an, an additional option, a, another place to kind of escape the pressure during the hunting season. But there's a couple of these on the property where trees either just blew down or the previous owner was taking them out to, to again, supplement the heat in his house. So we have one here, we have one about 75 yards to the east, and, there, and there's one way on the back corner of the property, not really in the most ideal location because I need to access around that corner, but. That, that's just where they took down some trees and that's where there's a lot of new growth now. But again, this is what you can have on your property if you just let sunlight into your closed canopy woods. You're gonna have all of this new growth just because you're letting sunlight hit the forest floor. And as you can see, that's full sun up there. There's not a single tree blocking that sunlight. And over time, I, I am gonna probably, you know, kind of feather this edge a little bit, give this area a little bit more sunlight, give it a little bit more cover because I, I want to increase the bedding opportunities on this property because in this area there's not a whole lot of bedding opportunities in general so I want to provide more on this property. And if you're able to do this on your property you can have immediate cover if you're able to hinge cut smaller trees like this because you're not only going to have the cover of the hinge cuts on the ground you're going to have the new growth from the sunlight but if you do have a property where you have a majority uh, of larger trees in the area that you want to do something like this it's gonna take a little bit longer, again, anywhere from three to five years to, to really see a lot of the new growth start coming in. So if you're hoping to put a few bedding areas on your property, I wanted to show you, it doesn't have to be super complicated. The biggest thing is you wanna have sunlight hitting the forest floor. So you gotta take trees down. And it might take a little bit of time, or you might have immediate cover if you're able to hinge cut some of the smaller trees, but but anyone can make a really thick area on their property, hopefully turning it into a bedding area as long as you get enough sunlight to that location. So normally you wanna save the best for last, but I did the exact opposite in this video. Uh, this is an area of our property that has the most opportunity. And for those of you guys that are not familiar with corporate America speak and their lingo, I'll, I'll translate. Uh, it sucks. I should have done this video a few weeks ago before leaf out, but hopefully you guys can still see what I'm trying to show you. Uh, this is an area where you can see way too far. From this location that I'm standing in right here, I can see about 150 yards in almost every direction. And that is not good. Uh, some people will call this the, a, a park effect woods. Some people call this a deer desert. And they're absolutely right. It, it looks just like a state park. And unlike a state park where there's no hunting pressure, there's a lot of hunting pressure in this area. So this is going to be a deer desert in the fall. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm never going to see a deer in this area as they're coming from, you know, maybe a, a neighboring field in, into my cover or, or to food plots. You know, I could randomly see a deer, but there's not going to be any consistent pattern back here. It's all going to be random movement, and it's, a lot of it's going to be nocturnal movement uh, because the deer do not want to be in this open woods especially bucks and even more so those older bucks. And why I wanted to show you this is because I want to show you what happens when there is a lack of sunlight. When, it, when there's a closed canopy, there isn't any opportunity for new growth. That means no browse, no food, no cover, no security. The deer do not really want to be here. Now they might want to be here during the summer. As you can see, there is a lot of green behind me. There's a lot of food behind me. But during the hunting season, all of that, all those young maples, they're like ankle high, maybe calf high. That's not doing anything for them from a cover perspective. They need something a little bit more than that. Now this woods isn't as bad as, as some woods out there. As you can see behind me, there is some green. There are a lot of properties out there where it's just nothing but bare leaves. Even during the summer, there's, it's just bare leaves. And that's terrible. There, there is still browse in this woods. And during the summer, there might be more deer in here. But during the hunting season, this is a ghost town back here. And I'm not sure if you can see behind me, but there is a little bit of a clear cut, maybe uh, 80 yards over my left shoulder. And there is a little bit of a feathered edge 
kind of leading to that clear cut. So as the, there's filtered sunlight, there, there's more growth, but where I'm standing right now, where it's a closed canopy woods, there is no growth in here. It, it's, it's pretty much just leaves. And, and this is very common in, in a lot of your woods. And so I, I just wanted to show you guys, you know, what it does look like when there is no sunlight and, and compare that to what we saw earlier, where you're able to get sunlight to the forest floor, how much growth you can have and how thick your property can potentially be if you just let sunlight in. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video on sunlight and how important it is to your whitetail habitat improvements. If you do have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can and we will see you guys in the next video.